Let's give it up for our next TED Like Talk. Hello everybody and first question, how many design leaders in the room? And how many want to become design leaders? Interesting. So I would say that uh, uh, I would first want to talk about my journey. That's my journey. Uh, I would say no journey is upwards, downwards, sideways. It's always like this. You're always exploring, you're always confused, you're always trying to figure out what's next. And that's exactly what we are all trying to do. So in this journey, I would say I was a creative thinker and somebody told me I should probably become an artist. So I graduated in painting. So that's where my journey started as an artist. But then over the line, I would say I became a film editor, I did some work for MTV, then I did the work for, I would say, the uh, www.com time, where we did, I was a web designer, and then it busted and I was jobless. And what next, right? So I had to reinvent myself, got into publishing, got into graphics, got into branding, museum design, fashion, packaging, branding, environmental design, name it, and I did it. And then, finally, I got into design thinking and user experience, and then I started liking it. And then, I would say, over the years, I was already a design leader when I was a web designer, and I was already a design leader when I was probably into the fa fashion and visualization time also. So all this time, I played multiple roles of a design leader, sometimes a manager, sometimes a lead, sometimes a director. All of that happened with me. But it just happened gradually. I never worked for towards it. It just came to me, and I kept, exp uh, I would say, I accepting whatever that came to me. But when I was doing this, and when I wanted to talk on a topic in the UX India, my topic was different. My topic was about my book, which is yet to be published, so I'm saving it for the next year. And then Jabeen said, why don't you speak on design leadership? And I was like, that's an interesting topic. Uh, let me also try what I should be doing. And I just said, should I be just talking about my journey or should I talk about all the design leaders' journey? So what I did is I made a survey and I sent out to 50 design leaders. And out of the 50 design leaders, I got 30 design leaders who responded back. I had to promise them coffee and a lot of other things because definitely they wouldn't have done it otherwise. They all were interested in the coffee and not the survey. But through the survey, I will take you through the journey of what design leaders actually think, what their life is, what they are struggling with, what, uh, how, how did our leadership happen to them, and also some important quotes from all of them, right? So I thought it's not fair to probably just give my journey to everyone. It's almost like Tom Tomming and talking about my boosting my ego. I thought it would be nice to probably just share everyone's journey. Yeah? So I want to ask all of you, are you guys ready to be a design leader? Come on, say something. Yes, no, whatever it is. Yes? Are you all ready to be design leaders? Do you know what it takes to be a design leader? <laughs> Do you think a design leader is someone who gets a fat salary paycheck and a fancy designation? Uh, and do you want to be a design leader because of that? Yes, no? Nobody wants a fat paycheck? Eventually? Okay. <laughs> because I do hear a lot of people coming up to me and how do I become a design leader? I do get those questions, right? Do I do an MBA to become a design leader? I get those questions too. And I'm like, seriously, you want to do an MBA to become a design leader? Not really, right? You just need the number of years and experience to be a design leader. So I would say, these are some quotes that came to me as to when are you ready to become a leader? The first quote was, when your work acts as your business card. 
Do you have that strong portfolio with you? These are quotes by all the design leaders, and these are given, and these are verbatim. Okay. The second one is when you can make a room full full of strangers believe in your work, and you can do that day in and day out. So when you think you're a design leader, make sure first your portfolio is really, really good. Second is you can command a room. People can listen to you. They believe in you, and they believe in your stories. Even if they are fake, they believe in your stories. You are a leader. Sometimes you have to fake it to to make it. So that's what I would say. Okay. The next one is that a design leader is someone who only not just designs uh, designs, but also understands business, technology, and does challenge the status quo. That is a very important thing. And the second is envisions a future. And experiences and shares vision, and also gets buy-in from different stakeholders. How often we designers feel a bit left out in the large organization? Yes, all of us, right? So when I spoke to all the design leaders, they said we are very happy with our team and our design, but when it comes to the larger organization, we feel disconnected. And why do we feel that? We feel that because we don't feel ourselves belonging with them. We feel we are designers. We are different. Why do we feel that? When we are working and crafting solutions, we have a development team, we have a coding team, we have a front end team, but still we do have a little high headedness in our head, saying that we are designers. Why do we have that? And that's why you feel left out. The day you start feeling I'm one of them, you will not feel left out. And there's a beautiful word called braving by Brené Brown. I'm sure you must have researched about her. One of the fantastic leadership uh, trainers, and she talks about vulnerability and she talks about empathy like no one else can do that. So do check her out. This is not something. The braving word is not invented by me. It's there out there in Google. Please go out there and check. So I would say, when you can be a leader is when you learn the art of braving. Now you would say, what's braving? Yes, braving is to be brave, but Bernie's gone one step ahead and defined braving. Okay, braving is about boundaries, reliability, accountability, warmth, integrity, non-judgmental, and generosity. You'll find it in Google. Please don't take screenshots. You'll get better ones in Google. This is a very sad design. You'll get better ones. Okay. So what I want to say is boundaries. As a leader, you should know your boundaries. It's absolutely important. Okay. We were designers, so we get so pally with our designers that we lose those boundaries, and we don't know where to draw a line. It's happened with me. It's happened with a lot of my colleagues. And that's where you really want to know your boundaries. You want to know what's okay and what's not okay. The second one is reliability. Absolutely, like I'm sure if you're a design leader, your management knows you are reliable, and hence they've hired you. So you don't have to worry about that. If you are not reliable, you would not be there. Second is accountability. Accountability for your team, for yourself, and for your, I would say the business. That's absolutely important. Because accountability is where you will stand and where your status will be there. So these are areas which you want to be. And vault, vault is absolutely important. That trust, bringing in with your team members, bringing it with people. Because as a leader, there will be a lot of th things which will be shared to you, and you do not want to share everything with your team members. And that is something which you want to safeguard. You can be very friendly. You can be very nice. But you do not want to share certain things which is trusted upon you. So this is something which you definitely want to safeguard. Integrity, of course, you have to be there. And non-judgmental, yes, you have to be there. Often we come with a lot of biases, and non-judgmental is not about agreeing or disagreeing. It's about listening. It's always about listening. You can disagree with somebody. Absolutely fine. But you have to listen, and that is absolutely important. 
And the last one is generosity. You have to be a generous leader. You cannot be having, this is my team, that's not my team, or that's somebody else's team, right? You have to be generous enough. And this is something which I learned when I was heading the BCG Asia Pacific Design Studios. And I'll give you an example there. I was leading teams from Australia, Japan, China, India, Singapore, uh, Middle East. And I was a little bit closer to my India team, which was not right, right? And my leadership often said, you know, hey, what about the Japan team? Hey, what about the Korea team? And I'm like, I don't even understand the language, right? But then I had to learn, and I had to be more and more generous. I had to listen to everyone. And that was something which taught me how do you handle diverse teams, and how can you not have favorites, right? You cannot have favorites when you are a leader. You have to be absolutely sure about that. Another one. And when you learn the art of braving, you actually, that leads to trust. So trust, like I would say yesterday, we had a lovely presentation by Morris. I absolutely loved it. And he actually said it. You know, trust is given. You know, trust is not taken. As leaders and as designers, you know, we are micromanagers. Because we all love the art of pixel perfection. Right? We all would love to have that pixel perfect design. But sometimes your juniors can't deliver that. You know, and you feel, forget it, I'll do it. That's the wrong thing to do. That's exactly the wrong thing to do where you do not trust those designers. You have to trust them. And you do not have to follow up on them. You do not want, you, you let them fail. I would say, I will give you a little example about my daughter. She has a mark on her hand, and she burnt herself with popcorn. And she was tiny, and she wanted to touch the popcorn. And I said, don't touch, don't touch, it's hot. And she said, no, I want to touch, I want to touch. And I said, go ahead and touch. And she touched it, and she burnt. Today, she has that mark, and she remembers it, and she says, I will listen. So that's something which you want to do. Let them go out there and experiment. Let them fall and let them fail. I know you are there to care for them, but you're like so worried they will fall, they'll create a mess, there'll be an escalation, but that's okay. That's absolutely okay if they fall, if they mess up, because they will learn. And that's where I would say, and these are these tiny gestures, you know, which builds trust, and not those large ones, you know. These tiny, small, small things, you know, turning up on time, delivering on time, keeping your time, or being there when you are told to be there. These are small things which will be there and help you to gain that trust. Another one is about, leadership is not about titles or corner office. It's about willingness to step up, put yourself out there, lean into courage. The world is desperate for braver leaders. This is something which I definitely want to ask anyone. How often do you take a stand for your team? Sometimes you're non-confrontational, right? You don't want to get messed up because you don't want to mess up in front of your boss because they might give you your increments, your bonuses, right? And you don't want to talk. How often do you speak for your team? That's very important. You want to take that stand. You want to take that courage, and you want to fight it out for all of them, right? Because they are looking up to you. Always remember that. Because they don't have a voice to the leaders. You are that channel. And if you don't stand up, then nobody's going to stand up for them. Yeah? So this is something which I would make sure that, you know, you want to do that. Stand up for your teams. Going next, <clears throat> this is fresh from Don Norman, and he said that how many of us are designs, how many designers are CEOs? Okay, none, very few. I can proudly say that in Accenture Song, Droga is a CEO, and he come, he's a designer, right? So I would say proudly that yes, Accenture understands the value of design. I'm not tom tomming about Accenture. I don't want anybody to be hired in Accenture. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but what I would just say is that you absolutely need to influence the C-suites on design. And it's important. They need to understand the value of design, and we need to bring them on 
together with that. Also to understand how technology works, how technology is shaping the world, and how businesses are working. I sh you should not be always talking experience design, human-centered design. They all know it. You are not the only ones who are teaching them. Okay, as designers, you feel, oh, I am the one teaching them about experience. Not at all. Everybody is talking about experience. Even the architect, the business architect, the BAs, all of them are talking about experience. So you're not the only chosen one who's talking about experience. So what I would suggest is talk business. Talk business with your team. Make them understand how businesses are run and where the business is coming in and where the businesses are not coming in. So this is something which is absolutely important. When you talk to your C-suit, please don't talk about design. Talk about business. Talk about how design can impact business, how design can bring in ROI. That is important, right? If you say, let me teach you how experiences, they'll get shut off. Because they have to take care of balance sheets. They have to take care of revenue. Show them how you can bring that revenue. So that's, I would say, design leaders. Now, coming back to my survey, a lot of myths. Uh, there were things like people felt design comes naturally. Not at all. Design leadership does not come naturally. Everybody goes through that journey and becomes a design leader. So that's hardly true, according to the survey. The next, next is autonomy. You can make things happen magically because of the power of the seat. Absolutely not. Your seat, there are 20 seats above you, there are 10 seats below you. So your seat is not the important seat, and you cannot make things happen. As a design leader, you have to work to make things happen. And that is what the myth is. Now, 70% feel it's not a glamorous designation. 70% designer leaders feel it's not a glamorous status. 60% leadership had design should just happen to them. Okay, it was not that it just came or they worked towards it. It just happened to them. And 100% design leaders are ready to promote the next design leader. And all of them have agreed that I am there to promote, push, if that person is ready in my team. And none of them said, no, I'm not ready. It was provided you had the talent. And you did not have to have the number of years of experience to become design leader. You just had to have talent. Yeah? And these are 30 design leaders who are speaking. And leaders are born. Yes, that's a myth. Leaders are not born. You become a leader. And then leads have cushy jobs with fat salaries. Not really. We do not have cushy jobs because be there any escalation? Just a minute. I need five at least. OK. OK, then I'll go a little faster. Sorry about that. I did not see the timer. There are more things, but I'll probably share it later. Uh, I would say the typically design leadership happens after 16 to 20 years. And don't be in a hurry to get there. But before I go, I would want to probably share a small poem I will take two minutes. I'm sorry about that. So I did not want you all to take screenshots. I've written a small poem. And it's time to listen, not hear. So put down those phones and make some space inside. I will recite some thoughts that has helped me steer, uh, steer clear of fear and choose the harder right instead of an easier wrong. I call it lead with heart, design with soul. I wish we were taught to lead with heart and not just with power, but compassion from the start. I know leadership isn't all about crown, but mixing strength with kindness and never talking down. I hope more of us say that it's okay to trust your gut, not just the facts, to trust your instincts, and not just rely on contracts. To show your hearts no weakness, it takes strength to be true. And leaders to, who connect, well, they are the ones who really glue. I wish we were taught to design solutions like art, to craft experiences, and not just engineer a path. 
When we see the user as human and not just as a target, we lead with creativity and make design a whole. We are taught that failing is the end of the world. After all, that's how we learn and grow and be bold. Most of you know that resilience isn't giving up, it's dusting off and trying one more time. And leaders who've messed up, they know what the fight is for. I wish we speak our languages loud with no apologies, cause accents are charming, not something we need to appease. No more struggling in corporate speak, just say what you mean, use content over fancy words, Keep it clear and keen. I detest it when we don't showcase our knowledge with pride. More than chasing marks and grades, we must let our wisdom glide. Lastly, I wish women's strength weren't labeled aggression, but boldness like men with equal expression. Their voices not be dismissed as emotional and weak, but heard as leaders with a unique perspective to speak. So years to leading with heart and letting creativity bloom, to embrace all your quirks and kick fear out of the room. May kindness be your compass in work and all we do, because a world with that kind of a leader, well, that's a world made anew. Thank you so much.